we go to the big voice from the automobile space. Uh, you just saw uh, the handsome man, uh, Rajiv Bajaj, uh, waiting by. He has obliged us by coming on camera and not on phone that he normally does. Thank you very much, Rajiv Bajaj. Uh, uh, let me warn you about a bit of a disappointment. Sonia is not with Good us. Morning. Her baby is not keeping well. <laughs> Uh, but I guess uh, you can have a conversation oh, no. with her. <laughs> yes, I know it's so low. Uh, I thought I would give you a Christmas gift, but uh, Thank you. sorry, you have given given us one by coming on camera. Well, uh, how is uh, the new year looking? You'll have had a fairly, uh, you know, successful 2018. It's what uh, year to date, <clears throat> a 30% growth in volumes that you'll have reported, and uh, both domestic growth and export growth have fired with 30%. But uh, is the, are the next uh, few months looking a little difficult going by the global scenario? Well, Lata, I would say more than difficult. They are looking very interesting and very exciting. Um, and let me tell you why in, uh, in three broad terms. You see, first of all, for the domestic motorcycle industry, uh, growth this year has been 14%, um, which is no different really than the 14% of last year, mm -hmm. and in fact better than the 4% of uh, FY17. Okay. Uh, so on the uh, face of it, it seems to be business as usual, and against this 14%, Bajaj has grown at 31%, as you just mentioned, uh, so it's been a good year for us. Mm -hmm. But if we scratch below this, uh, we can see some very interesting trends mm -hmm. um, uh, which are emerging strongly. Uh, you know, uh, most industries are typically uh, viewed in a simple three-tiered structure as the price segment at the bottom, the premium segment at the top, and the value segment in the middle. Mm. Now, what has happened um, over this financial year, and I would like to believe partly due to uh, the strong strategy that we have executed, is that the structure of this industry, which was 20%, 60%, and 20%, mm. which is very typical actually, mm. has already moved to... Uh, 30, 50, 20, and is on its way to becoming a 35, 40, 25 percentage structure, which means essentially the middle of the market is getting squeezed out, um, and people are either uh, moving down uh, or moving up. So this is a very, very interesting trend from our point of view because we really compete, uh, you know, uh, at the bottom and at the higher end of the market, and not so much in the middle. Uh, let me give you some numbers um, uh, to mm. substantiate that. The entry segment this year has grown at about 30% mm. as opposed to the industry growth of 14%. Uh -huh. Bajaj has grown 60% in okay. the entry segment. Okay. The, pre the premium segment has grown by 20% in which we have grown by 25%. But okay. the mid segment mm. has grown by only 3%. And in fact, given how much stock there is in dealerships, mm. um, you know, I would actually hazard a guess that that segment is flat. So this is a very important trend that has emerged this year. Okay, then let me just scratch that point a bit before uh, I hand it over to uh, Nigel. Uh, you know, uh, we often hear that there is a lot of inventory. We have heard that there are deep discounts uh, that are being offered. Uh, is that true then only of the mid segment? Well, I would say largely so, because uh, at the bottom segment, uh, anyway, pricing is very tight, uh, so there is not much room for, uh, for discounts there. And in the premium segment, uh, brands or products don't really sell based on discounts. Mm. So um, what is happening in the, in the middle is I would say there's three things happening there that are driving these discounts. One, polarization, which mm. means people are moving down or moving up, away from the mid-segment. Uh, to scooterization because the mid segment is where you know most people are moving uh, from uh, motorcycles to scooters uh, and three if i may say so a lack of innovation now this mid segment is dominated i think 60 or 70 percent by hero uh, they are really the leader uh, mm -hmm. or if i may say so the hostage of that segment and uh, and they need to drive innovation there and somehow i think that is not really happening uh, as much as it needs to uh, so that is why there is a lack of interest in that segment and people are either moving up, moving down or moving out. Yeah. All right. Uh, hi, Rajiv. Good morning. Uh, Nigel here. Sonia is not in, but actually I think I'm your target audience because I've Good been morning, riding Nigel. Bajaj bikes uh, from the early 2000s. I remember the Eliminator was a dream. It came out for around 95,000 rupees, but one of, one of my gifts early in 2000. But let's talk about business. Uh, inventory levels in December, how are they looking as of yeah. uh, now? And also, if you could tell us, you're telling us 30% year-to-date, good growth number. Yeah. For FY19, what kind of a growth can you end up with? And for FY20, what's the outlook out there? 
Well, uh, I think uh, industry stock at uh, dealerships is anywhere between six to ten weeks depending on uh, which manufacturer you speak to and what specific brand one is talking about. Uh, so it's nowhere near, frankly, the four to six weeks, which is normal. Um, I think uh, most people expected more out of the festive season uh, than what it delivered, and that is, uh, you know, well known and has been covered by you guys uh, repeatedly. Um, and then the stock is all there at dealerships, so uh, that is why there's a lot of pressure to liquidate this stock. Uh, in view of this stock, I think uh, quarter four growth will be very muted for the industry. Uh, uh, in terms of primary sales from uh, companies to dealerships. Uh, although retail will continue at, let's say, the 10% year-on-year growth that we've been witnessing, um, I have no uh, specific reason to believe that FY20 should be significantly better uh, or worse. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to predict the future, but I would assume this level of double-digit growth to continue. The only thing I would point out is that uh, we are going to hit in uh, April 19 the implementation uh, of the new safety norms and particularly for motorcycles above 125 cc this means the incorporation of uh, ABS uh, braking technology. Now this is going to push up prices by anywhere between four to 10,000 rupees depending on the specific technology you employ for a specific motorcycle. Now that's the level of uh, uh, disruption that took place uh, roughly when insurance went up a few months ago and that was very disruptive. Uh, you know, so I think we are looking at uh, how to manage this disruption uh, and then we will be headed very soon, uh, six, eight months later, into upgrading our entire portfolio, I mean for the whole industry, to uh, meet the BS6 norms. And that's going to come with another big cost delta on top of this. So I think the biggest challenge for the industry is going to be to make this transition over these two norms related to safety and emission over, let's say, the next 12 months. So that, that's a big challenge for all of us. Oh, that's important uh, that you're pointing out. Uh, has the uh, industry even overcome the insurance challenge that uh, kind of uh, disturbed November and October? Uh, I think uh, we are still feeling uh, some of the after effects of that. We can see it clearly in terms of uh, retail performance in December. Um, you know, uh, if you talk to uh, uh, players across the industry, uh, perhaps the feedback you will receive is that uh, December retail growth is uh, flat to negative actually. Uh, now, whether this is only because of insurance or there is something called a overall, uh, you know, sentiment overhang uh, or this has to do with the credit squeeze which affects, uh, I would say, some players more than others. I mean, in our case, since we have such a strong financing arm in uh, Bajaj Finance uh, uh, for Bajaj motorcycles and three-wheelers, we are obviously less impacted. Uh, I would say those like HMSI. Uh, who you know don't have that are, are more impacted. So there is multiple factors obviously, but uh, definitely uh, there is no 14% growth in the market currently. Oh. Rajiv, you Can said that the mid market is getting scooterized. Uh, any plans to get back into uh, that segment? No, absolutely not. I mean, uh, for me, Hero with its leadership in that segment is really, uh, you know, a captain of a sinking ship. Um, and uh, there is very good reason um, uh, why uh, that segment is shrinking, um, because it just doesn't offer value to the consumer as opposed to the segment below and above. Now, as far as scooters is concerned, uh, this is, again, a very large industry. Um, you know, 500, 600,000 a month with very well established players uh, like uh, Honda and TVS who are number one and number two. So I think, uh, you know, if there is uh, one formula for success in this industry, quite simply it is differentiation. And Bajaj would have nothing to bring to the table uh, if it were to, uh, you know, introduce to the market the 50th uh, 100cc or 125cc scooter. And that is why you can see that uh, TVS is struggling vis-a-vis -vis Activa and players like Yamaha, Hero, Suzuki are really left very far behind, you know, with 5 and 10 percent market share. Uh, there is no top line and there is certainly no bottom line. But the opportunity that is there, uh, and this I have shared with you before, mm. is to dis, uh, disrupt this uh, uh, industry, you know, because as someone that doesn't make scooters, um, we have no uh, stake yeah. uh, in uh, keeping the scooter going in terms of, you know, investments in the plant or, or in the marketplace. Mm. So, you know, an electric scooter would be a, a very
वेरी नाइस थिंग टू डू हाँ ओके इलेक्ट्रिक स्कूटर और मे बी गियरलेस वुड दैट ऑल्सो बी समथिंग यू थिंक ऑफ well well scooters are uh, effectively uh, assumed to be gearless okay. lata now the question is whether uh, a they will be gasoline powered or electric uh, and two uh, where would they be positioned so i would like to be consistent with my past stand and say that uh, you know we will come in with electric vehicles for personal use at the top of the pyramid okay. because all new technology does uh, does well mm. uh, when it comes in at the top you know because those consumers appreciate it and can afford it and you don't have to bleed to introduce it okay. now whether it will be a scooter or a motorcycle as i've said before time will tell okay. but definitely before 2020 Uh, both uh, in the personal space in the form of a scooter or a motorcycle and in the commercial space in our three wheeler and quadricycle we intend to be there uh, with uh, electric bikes that's good to hear uh, rajiv and of course that will have a positive rub off on the environment as well not that scooter uh, scooters or motorcycles are a big problem for the environment but every little bit will count uh, let me get to the other big market of yours uh, the global market uh, you know it's it's fired very well for you but can it i mean we're seeing commodity prices fall so some of your destination markets may feel the pinch uh, how will you gauge it for the foreseeable future i mean say for the next few months well uh, markets continue to be uh, uncertain lata i mean let me give you a specific example we just heard last week that in egypt which is a very significant three wheeler market for us you know typically 7000 three wheelers a month of the 30000 we export uh, there is a move um, for a year or so to to ban the three wheeler uh, why because uh, uh they there is a perception that uh, the three wheeler is too popular uh, too many of the egyptian youth are uh, becoming three wheeler auto rickshaw drivers and there aren't enough people to work in the factories i mean what kind of convoluted logic is nowadays prevailing in the minds of political leaders across the world is very difficult to fathom mm -hmm. but so these these uh, ups and downs are there having said that Uh, you know we we will finish in fact uh, you reminded me uh, of a wonderful fact when we finish on 31st of december mm. we would have exceeded 2 million um, motorcycles and three wheelers exported in a calendar year for the mm. first time ever for bajaj and i don't think any auto manufacturer you know this is going to represent 40% of our sales mm. uh, if i may say so uh, who can be a better ambassador for make in india than bajaj auto exporting 2 million vehicles in this calendar year to 70 countries across six continents so it's uh, right now exports is in a good place yes there are challenges and we can only overcome them in the two ways that we have been mm -hmm. one is by entering new markets to de-risk uh, our exports mm -hmm. we are doing that mm -hmm. uh, you know i can share with you details of uh, newer markets that are doing well with us and to to uh, get the product strategy sharper and sharper and we've been doing that and that is why some of our recent uh, product launches in export markets have done very very well well rajiv you know uh, sonia just messaged me she just said that maybe i could be the core uh, customer for you in terms of motorbikes but the electric scooter sounds quite interesting uh, as well so we'll wait by for that by 2020 final question in terms of market share you move from 15 to 20% you can buy both you can get both <laughs> all right 15 to 20% the market share has uh, moved to in the domestic market uh, 24% on the cards in FY20 You know you remind me of what uh, Mahendra Singh Dhoni said when he was asked you won T20 ODI you you know test number 1 team etc what would you like to do now and he said i would like to do it all over again <laughs> so i would say the same thing uh, you know we move from 15 to 20 I'd like to move from 20 to 25 over the next 12 months okay. and let me say this you know a 10 percentage point gain in this market is huge because 10% is three times the absolute market share of Yamaha after 35 years in India right. because their share is only 3% 10% is equal to the market share of uh, of Honda in India in motorcycles mm -hmm. and 10% is more than the market share of Enfield and TVS in India so for Bajaj to get 10% share in 2 years i think would be remarkable we are halfway there and with your good wishes we'll get there all right okay. in dhoni style i think that's a helicopter <laughs> shot out of the park all right rajiv thanks so much uh, for joining in and uh, giving us all those details all the best for the new year as well yes sir do you have a great year ahead thank you very much uh, for uh, helping us end uh, 2018 on a high it was always a pleasure having you
All right, so that's uh, positive statements coming in, but uh, don't uh, forget that the red flags do come in in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the safety standards that will kick in and uh, uh, the BS6, all of which will increase the price of motorcycles. So something that uh, will be a bit of a hurdle. We have to take a quick break. We are coming back. We will have the management of Balrampur TV with us. We will also have our technical experts to give you fresh feeds.